Welcome back everyone, I am Blaze here. Today's video is the Bard class guide for five expansions actually. We're going to be talking about the time frame after Planes of Power, after Lost Dungeons and Norath, up until the Serpent Spine expansion. So in this, this is all the stuff we'll be talking about in this video. The main thing I want to talk about though is that the level cap gets increased up to 70 during this time frame. During these expansions, there are four main armor sets that become available. In Gates of Discord, there is raid gear that's quested. There is cultural gear that's trade skilled. There's Omens of War has its own raid gear that's quested for. And then Depths of Dark Hollow has raid gear that's actually just dropped. You don't have to quest for it. So let's say if you don't raid, how can you get some really top tier gear? How can you keep up and not be under geared during this time frame? Well, this is where cultural armor comes in. Every race and every class has a unique set of trade skilled armor that you can buy in the bazaar. You can buy from some trade skiller that you can put in all the major slots, such as this BP for humans. And if you look at the bottom of it, there are three different slots for augments. This is how you make the gear actually useful. So you can also buy these augments that are deity specific in the bazaar. They're trade skilled as well. So Aeonic is agnostic, so I buy an agnostic augment. You slap that on your BP, you slap that on your piece of gear, and its stats are crazy good. And pay attention to where it says on the bottom that it says the Type 12 augment. During the Depths of Dark Hollow expansion, during Prophecy of Row, pretty much every raid mob is going to drop something called the Last Blood, which goes into augment type 12, like you see on the cultural armor here. And this augment is beastly. There's a bunch of different types, but I put up this Warchief one just as a sample. It is crazy good, and they usually have a really nice effect on it. The thing is, though, it's super expensive because you have to buy a container that right now on Mangler is going for about a chrono and a half in terms of price. So if you want to make this, it's going to be costly. And for those who don't know what augments are, they're basically these little bonus pieces of stat that you can put on all your gear as long as you have the appropriate slot for it. Type 11 augments go on to armor that has type 11 slots. Now, I never went to get a last blood augment just because the raid gear that drops from say Depths of Dark Call of Omens of War, it doesn't actually have a slot for it. So that's why I never did it. But if you go for cultural gear and you raid, you might as well. Next piece of gear you will want to get as a bard is your Epic 2.0, the Blade of Vesagrin. You're going to be using this for a couple of expansions. It's, it's an incredible weapon. It's a 19 modifier to all songs, which really can't be beat except by some instruments. It's better than all your gear. And it has a one minute long buff that is reusable every three minutes that significantly boost DPS of everybody in your group. It helps your melees land more hits. It helps critical hit nukes and critical dots. It helps out big time. In my uh, raid groups, when I pop this along with the shaman in my group, just the DPS goes off the charts. It's, it's nuts. And there's something called the 2.5, the epic 2.5, which is you see this invocation of the last dawn here. In Demi Plane of Blood, the, the raid zone where Mayong Mistmore is, there's a bunch of these class-specific pages that drop off of different raid targets, off of these different chests. And when you turn it in to a quest NPC in Demiplane, it'll automatically upgrade your epic with an invisible augment, but it'll automatically upgrade your epic to be slightly better stats. For the bard, it's not really that big of a deal. But for some other classes, getting this 2.5 does matter. It's, it's a huge upgrade. I just did it on Aeonic largely because you're going to be using the 2.0 for at least a few expansions as an actual equipped weapon. So I might as well make it usable for longer. Next piece of gear I'd like to talk about is the Omens of War Quested Breastplate. That you get the main item, the J-Rook's Vest, from doing the Anguish Raid, the End Raid Zone in Omens of War. Why this BP is great is because of the clickable called Superior Rhythmic Reflexes. And for 24 seconds, every five minutes, you can boost your chance to do double attacks, 
not really that big of a deal. But you can also make yourself stun immune for that 24 seconds. And there's some fights where it's very useful to be stun immune. So this is a, not necessarily a game changing item, but something that you might want to get if you have a raid target that stuns a lot. It can make it so your melody doesn't get interrupted every five seconds. Another piece of gear that's really nice, this comes off of Vishimtar in the Dragons of Norath expansion. This is a face item that significantly boosts your chance to land critical hits with all your melee weapon types. You might want to get this if you want to boost your DPS. This is a piece of gear that I've only seen it drop once so far, but this comes off of Mayong Mistmore and Demiplane, and it has a permanent AA unlock, which boosts your mana regeneration capabilities and your hit point regen up to 10. I don't think it stacks off of the previous one I got from Plane of Time, so I think for me it only boosted up at five extra mana regen points, but that does matter if you're playing Bard. You want to get your mana regen as high as possible because that's what lets you do fading memories a lot more. It's what lets you do your dirge nukes a lot more. During this time frame, there's four main illusions that become available. The fire elemental and earth elemental are these stringed instrument loots that drop off of grouping zones during this time frame. And the frog and ogre illusions come from raid zones. And the last piece of gear we'll talk about here is a ring that drops off of INA Row and Death Knell, INA Row being the goddess of music. And this ring, what it does is, I think it's every 30 minutes, but on here it says six. Basically, it puts down this rune on the ground that anybody within the vicinity gets a huge bonus to their melee critical chance, to their nuke chance, all that. So it's a huge DPS boost for everybody that's within the runes area of effect. And it lasts about 30 seconds to a minute. From what I was told by some other guildies, this ring is good for four expansions after Prophecy of Row. So it's something you want to get if you want to maximize DPS of your raid or your group for that matter. Now let's get into spells. I've never found anyone to explain what auras actually are. It sounded really confusing to me, but I can explain it right here. So auras are basically one click and done buff. You turn it on once, and then it stays on mostly permanently. It takes effect raid-wide on everybody that's within range of you. It does get turned off whenever you die. It also seems to randomly go off, like in every 70 minutes or something, or a couple hours. It will just randomly turn itself off, and you won't know. So you have to keep an eye on it because you might need to recast it. And sometimes you'll get an issue of you're trying to recast it and it says that your concentration is full. You can't. That means you have to go in and manually turn off the aura so you can recast it again. There's an aura window though that you have to open to do that. I think it's like shift A or something. In the uh, options menu, that little EQ button, there is the uh, option to get to the aura window. You can open it up there. And what's great about this aura here is it frees up a song slot. One extra song you can play instead of this one. This one is the V3 Overhaste song, and as well as it boosts spell damage of all your casters nearby. And this comes from doing a quest line in Prophecy of Row. And auras don't use any resources. It's really just a click once and done. That's it. Now, in terms of other spells, Omens of War replaces most of the major bard line spells, so I'm not gonna dwell on that here. But the spells that I do want to harp on, crowd control capabilities of bards get significantly boosted in the Omens of War expansion. Every expansion onwards from Omens of War, this seems to be constant. Of uh, Bards are always going to be able to mez about two to three levels above the cap of that expansion. So level cap right now is 70. You can mez up to 73. Pretty much any yellow con you can mez as a bard. And Charm is about two to three levels below the level cap. So right now I can Charm almost all Dark Blues. And the Mez isn't so much game changing because that's typically kept up with Bards, but Charm is huge. Because Charm has pretty much been irrelevant for Bards except for Classic. Every other expansion outside of it, the level cap on Charm is so low 
that it's virtually unusable in most grouping zones. It's almost like 10 levels below the actual cap of that expansion. So finally having a charm that is just two to three levels below level cap means it's actually usable for regular grouping zones. That's why I like to harp on it. it it's a really great upgrade that the developers did. The next spell I use now, this is the song I use in replacement for the V3 haste now. It's called Stormblade that comes off of a quest line in Dragons and Wrath. It is a weapon proc song. So for my group mates, every time it goes off, it does 100 damage. And then for me, because my AAs, it can do 419 damage on a regular proc. And if it goes critical, it'll do 1,200. And this thing has a crazy proc rate. It goes off a lot. So this thing just makes your bar DPS go nuts. It's a really nice song to throw in your twist. Useless though if you got casters, but I always use this if, I got a t if I'm in a tank group or DPS group, I always have the song in there. Prophecy Row adds a nuke proc song. I only use this if I have casters who can nuke. It has a chance to add a little extra damage to a landed nuke. Omens of War adds a rune song called Versa Vestigrin, a rune to melee and caster damage. But it's very small, helps a little bit, but not significantly. Gates of Discord has a spell called Dark Echo, which is a 50% chance to reflect a spell. I found it largely to be irrelevant. It doesn't seem to work all that great. I've tried to use it on raid targets, and it doesn't seem to do jack squat, so... And it has a cooldown, like you can only use it once every five minutes, so it's kind of worthless. The Depths of Dark Hollow expansion in a progression line gives you a new discipline that is called Thousand Blades. And it is a crazy DPS boost. When you click this discipline, you start smoking mobs with your melee attacks. Now, it lasts for a minute. You can use it pretty much every half hour. Do be careful though, it is the biggest endurance burn that you have when I click this it takes half of my endurance bar so I would not use it if I only had a quarter of my endurance left and it shares a timer with pure tone so if you click thousand blades pure tones also going to go down with it but this is a really good discipline I would get it I would go back to get it in terms of alternate advancements there's a lot of ones that boost your DPS capabilities there are ones that increase your survivability and some novelty alternate advancements. There's a novelty one for illusions. It makes your illusions last through zoning and lasts about 16 hours in duration. Dragons and Norath adds these little clickable bonus effects to everybody. So something called Lesson of the Devoted, which increases your EXP 50% for 30 minutes. And you can use this pretty much every day. It's really great. There's one where you have a Basically, do over button res, 100% EXP back, but you can only use it about once a week. You have a full heal, you got some heal pets, a jester bristlebane. There's some really nice novelty clicks from the Dragons of Norath expansion and the AA bar. And you don't have to pay for it, too, you just get it for free. You also get a guild lobby port and Prophecy of Row. There are AAs which increase your how many buffs you can have on. This is a really big one. It's very easy to become buff capped and then there's also one that increases your spell bar up by one point you'll have one extra spell you can put in your bar now for quest lines during this time frame of course you have the bard epic 1.5 2.0 and 2.5 you have i put the ones on red that you want to do even in later expansions because they're really that big dragons and norath you want to come back to do this progression line because it, this is the one that gives you the Stormblade, the weapon proc that I was talking about. There's one that gives, when you complete, I think, Tier 3, gives you a free extra buff slot. Gives you a bunch of AAs, it gives you a bunch of stat boosts. You, you definitely want to do the DON progression, even later expansions. Omens of War has a progression called the Miramite Proving Ground Trials, or MPG Trials, which will permanently boost your resists. Depths of Dark Hollow progression is the one that gives you your Thousand Blades DPS discipline. Prophecy of Rogue gives you your first aura. You have the Epic Request line, which gives you an Epic Appearance weapon augment. So you just do this quest line, hail the NPC, and they'll give you, like, if you want to make your, your weapon that you have equipped look like the 1.0 or the 2.0, 
you can get that. You get all your spells and omens of war from these runes that drop off array targets and various different names all throughout this area. Also, Depths of Dark Hollow does the same thing. There's spell runes that drop. If you're doing Demi Plane of Blood, the Mayong Mistmore raid zone, you'll want to get blockers because you're going to be snared if you don't otherwise. You're going to be snared for a good two hours. And then there's raid flagging for all these different expansions. Next are the song twists. What are the song twists I do? This is the one I use for melees. So I do Salma Vishan for resists and damage shield. War March of the Miram for 60% V2 haste, attack bonus, and damage shield. Chorus of Life, HP Mana Song, and Stormblade, that weapon proc song I was talking about. This is my most common twist. This is the one I use almost all the time. If I had a tank, I would swap out Mana Song for Vesagrin, the one that gives you a rune. And some other songs you might want to use. Arcane Aria, if you got nukers, it'll help them get a little extra damage off their nukes. The Shenanigans song there is a 45% AoE slow. Harmony of Sound to lower the resists of whatever target you're hitting. And then you have Elemental and Purifying Chorus, which is like your AoE raid-wide resist if you really need it. During this time frame, also a new feature called Tribute gets added. If you look at any sellable piece of gear, sellable piece of trash, it'll have some tribute value on it. And when you give it to a Tribute NPC, there's one in every starting city. There's also one in the Guild Hall. When you give this trash to the Tribute NPC, it'll give you points. It'll give you favor that you can use for these temporary bonuses. You activate the bonus, it'll burn whatever favor you got, and that's pretty much all. And you can have both on. You can have your personal Tribute on and your Guild Tribute on simultaneously. And lastly, a quick preview of the Serpent Spine expansion. The level cap does go up to 75. And supposedly, I, I can't confirm this, but I think the EXP rate on Mangler, it does also go up to live levels. So like on Feronia Vi, your EXP rate is going to go up big time. Bards get huge AAs here. They get the second rank of Fading Memories, reducing the mana cost of Fading Memories from 12% to 6 they get a lot of stuff to boost their mana regen. They get an increase to how many bandolier slots they got, mez duration, and some other DPS burns. There's a new set of class armor from raiding. And there's also new song sets where they do a tiered system. So you can actually purchase the first tier of all your songs straight up. So you will have it from the very beginning. And if you want the better versions, the second tier and the third tier, that's when you got to do grouping content and raiding content. This is really nice, though. This is really, really nice. Because all the other previous expansions, by the time you get a lot of the spells, they're largely irrelevant. The only ones that matter are, like, the last two levels of the cap. So being able to get all your spells from the get-go, purchasing them is really, really nice. So at the end of this video, thank you guys all for watching. I appreciate all the support for the channel.